Welcome and welcome back. Hey, in hey. this video, hey, hey, in this video, we're gonna mix it up a little bit. Not like in the kitchen, but in the ring. We got a question about uh, fighting, and a fighter asked us, How can I utilize the kettlebell to optimize my training with that for fighting, right? Yes. So, how the hell can we do that? We have about, what, three ideas that could work for? Uh, well, first, you get a really, really light kettlebell and you swing it at the other person. That definitely will end the fight, yeah, yeah, especially if you hit them with it. <laughs> but you could just look crazy enough that they're like, all right, that's good. That's, that's usually my strategy. Yeah, look crazy, don't get hit. When we're, when we're, talking, about, um, we're talking about kettlebell training, we're talking about it specific to a sport. It, this is fighting. We got asked about fighting. These concepts are going to uh, transfer over to a lot of different things. So there, there's some general things that you want to consider. Uh, when you're looking for training for athletics or sports, things like that. Um, but they're, 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 it's not, this isn't too specific to fighting, but we're going to use this just as an example. So keep that in mind. So the thing we need to, we need to think about a couple things. Uh, first, I want to think about um, what, is, what is the stance? You know, how are you performing your sport? You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be a little more vertical most of the time. Generally, you're going to keep your eyes up. Yeah. Um, well, that's your, probably a good idea. <laughs> probably. And keep so, your guard up. <laughs> so the, if, if, if you'd go and, and do like a mock swing, for example, from the side. Oh, so, like a kettlebell swing? Yeah, but just okay. so they can see you. So if he's going super deep, eyes on the floor, I probably don't want that. Even here, his shoulders are above his hips, but this isn't a very athletic position. <laughs> His 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 head, <laughs> his head is down. Um, this isn't this isn't the position we want. So I'm probably going to get him a little squattier anyway, um, just so he can really explode and be more in the uh, the stance that he's accustomed to. So that's some simple stuff, um, you know, that that you'll want to think about is the 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 right stance. Mm -hmm. Another thing to think about. And I think the most important thing with kettlebells is the idea of impulse. And we did a, we did a video on that. Yeah. I think so. We'll link so it. Yeah, yeah. Do, do we'll do all the, is, is, is um, in the description or something. Quickly, impulse is what moves the kettlebell. And it's the force you apply um, over the time which you apply it. And how you apply force to a kettlebell, how long you apply force to a kettlebell, really makes a big difference uh, in the results that you get with your particular, uh, your output, your, your, your swings, your snatches, your cleans, whatever. So uh, we'll, give you, we'll give you three examples. Um, we'll give you three examples and in, in, in where you, you may want to use them. But the, the thing to think about is if you are applying high force over the shortest amount of time possible, you're going to be training, you're going to be training power. Um, that's going to change the output. So let's 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 actually actually no. We got the big kettlebell. Let's start with that. We'll come yeah, back to power. Let's get that okay. Big kettlebell <laughs> so um, this is it's a forty eight kilo bell um, on the heavier side. Yeah. You know he's he's going to be able to swing this just fine. He's not going to be able to swing it very fast because it's very heavy. Um, the, you're going to get a lot of force going. Um, that that kettlebell is going to do something. Let's say like. Um, train something closer to limit strength. It's going to make him stronger. It's not going to make him super fast. He's not going to be able to swing it for very long. Um, go ahead and swing it as fast as you can and, and you'll, you'll, get, you'll get the idea of how quickly you, he can get it to move. Okay. <clears throat> so just do five here. Good. So if I have a fighter and I want I want to get that fighter stronger. I want to improve uh, punching power. I might do something like that. I might do some short bursts. Um, you know, do get a get a heavy bell in someone's hands and just have that fighter move it as quickly as they can. Understanding, though, I mean, could you do twenty reps at that speed? Um, no. No. I mean, anybody's going to slow down with almost any weight after probably five reps. Yeah, I was so. like, I'll probably start to decline in one or two from there. Yeah. Um, so he's not going to be able to do that for very long. Um, and you were trying, did you feel like you were moving that exceptionally fast? No, no. I mean, I felt like I was working hard, but it wasn't sure. like flying. So it's, it's a heavy bell and he's not getting it to move, uh, extremely quickly. So it's probably not going to build, let's say if we're working, if we're talking about a punch, probably not going to build his punching speed, but it's going to build his punching power. It's going to make him stronger. Okay. Oh, yeah. So if, if we look at, so that's one thing that you can do. You can do sets. I like to do sets of, of five, um, you know, just a few power sets. I give myself a nice long rest. 
um, because of the energy system that you're using, um, the dominant energy system, you're always using all three, but the dominant energy system is going to require more rest. So we might do multiple sets of fives here with a lot of rest in between because that's what, when you work this kind of strength, this is what it requires. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move that out of the way. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a note too, on some of, some of these terms, there are some technical terms. We're intentionally staying away from a lot of these because then it makes a video that's 45 minutes long and nobody's watching that. Yeah. So. <laughs> and if you're watching this still, keep going. We got more for you. <laughs> uh, so let's get, let's get a bell. Let's get the 20. Okay. Let's get the 20. <clears throat> yeah. So now I've got a bell. Um, I've got a bell for my athlete um, that he's going to be able to move quickly. Okay. Um, we're going to do some snatches. Now, snatches are inherently, in our opinion, we don't have the same stance for a swing and a snatch. We think, we think snatches should be more vertical because that's the direction of the bell. So I've already got a more vertical stance. I like that. Uh, really good full body movement. And we're going to develop some power here. So we're going to try to get uh, work done as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and do... Uh, let's go ahead and do the same five. Okay. Okay. We're going to do the same five, but you want to move that thing as quickly as possible. I'm going to stand out of the way. All right. <clears throat> Good. You almost missed that. It was so fast. <laughs> so how did, how did I feel faster? Oh yeah. It did. You made an awful face. Yeah. I'm a, little, I'm a little afraid. I always keep an awful face. But you saw you saw the intensity. You saw the speed. Now we we can work the same. We can work the same rep range. We can work more if we if we go if we do too many more in that rep range. We're still working. We're working the same energy system, uh, but the muscles are going to have a very different response. The the muscles are going to are going to learn to move quickly as opposed to move heavy things. So this is another this is another thing that I might use for a fighter. Um, assuming they've got, you know, adequate mobility, healthy shoulders, blah, blah, blah. And they can snatch. Yeah. Um, so we, we, that's something we may use and it's going to, it's going to teach people how to move quickly. Now, one of the things that I think is super cool about kettlebells that other modalities don't have in the same way is you have to learn to use momentum. And when, when you learn how to move a kettlebell well, you, you learn to move it with your entire body. Uh, and anybody, you know, we both have a background. We've done some, we've done some fighting stuff. Um, anybody who's done it for any length of time understands that when you throw a punch with your whole body, uh, it takes a long time to figure out. But once you do, it's, it's night and day different than just throwing the original arm punches you used to throw. Uh, when you go to take down somebody <laughs> and you actually have your whole body driving into them other than, you know, trying to shove people with yeah. their arms. So kettlebells are awesome for that. So he learned, he learned how to use all of his momentum, apply it to this object and move it very, very fast. So that would be another way that we would use a kettlebell. We would do shorter bursts. Um, we wouldn't rest quite as long because we still, you know, with this one, if we're looking at, at really moving it, uh, the bell as fast as possibly can, yes, we are going to, uh, we are going to rest long, but if we're looking to move it quickly, but we're also doing some conditioning, I'm probably going to have him rest maybe, you know, a minute or two, yeah. um, rather than like a full five to 10 minutes, um, just because we want him to learn how to recover faster as well. And that's not super heavy for him. So that would be the second way we would do it. Um, and let's go ahead and get the 28. <clears throat> I'll move it later. So, um, and we'll, we'll point out some commonalities and the different types of impulse that he had to use and could use to move the bell and some, some differences. But now let's go ahead. Um, why don't you do 30 of these? And while you're resting, I will explain to the, the good people. 30 swings? 30 swings. Two arm? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> this is boring. <laughs> Speed that up. <laughs> no, no, I mean in, the, in editing. <laughs> Love that you do most of the demos. <laughs> Me so, too. I'm getting so fit <laughs> making videos. <laughs> so now you're a little breathy, but you're good, yeah. right? You work yeah. some endurance. 
Um, did the impulse that you generated for each of the movements feel different? Yeah. So the first one, the first one, you didn't, you couldn't move the bell that fast because it was too heavy. Right? Correct. But you still, you still gave it your all. The first and the second impulse are going to be very similar. Just the implement's going to be different. Um, the second one, you really felt you you put all your force into it, and it really started to scream. It was really, really moving. That one, how hard were you? How hard were you really driving your feet into the floor? Um, not, seven not super ten. hard. Oh uh, yeah, like seven maybe. Okay. Eight, just because there was so many that I had to do. Yeah. Well, so so, but in terms of just the the the, the impulse generation, you you could see, especially if you've been coaching for a while, he wasn't giving it all that he could because he couldn't do that and still complete the reps. So if he if he were doing all that he possibly could. Um, he can't physiologically maintain that pace for 30 swings. It, it doesn't work that way. That energy system runs out of energy faster. So he, he might be able to, to do 30 full effort swings, but his effort would drop as, as his physiology demanded that it would drop. So what we're really looking at in, in this situation, you know, we would have him do some work like this and maybe do some shadow boxing or uh, some, some jump rope or, or much, much uh, shorter rest bouts because we're really trying to train some endurance here. And that's a good thing to do. Again, you know, we're, we're working, we're working in a, in a, uh, with a modality that requires that we use our momentum to move the bell. And when you get good at kettlebells, you will find that you don't use your arms, you use your body. So he's got his whole body applying force to that bell for a long duration. Really, really useful in fighting because yeah. you know when you look at the breakdowns, uh, Joel Jameson's got some really good work on this, but when you look at the breakdowns of which system you're using, a lot of people think that it's an all out you know, slugfest, but there's a lot of aerobic capacity that you need to train for fighting. And anybody who's actually been in a fight that's lasted longer than a punch knows that. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so the the idea here is that we've got three different types of uh, types of movements with different loads. Um, we want to think about the impulse. Okay. So first we think about position. What are we? How are we going to have our athletes stand and execute these skills? Um, going to be relevant with the swings. Um, I, I want. I don't want that really deep, deep hinge with with your swings because that's not how you're going to be in the ring. Does it matter? Maybe, maybe not. But I would rather get someone used to applying force um, in, in in a similar way. That's the point of training, in my opinion. So we get our stance. Then we think about what is it that we want to we want to do. So if I'm if I want you to hit harder, then I'm going to get a heavier bell in your hand and you're going to, you're going to smash it as much as you can for five reps, long rests. If I want you to hit faster, then we're going to get something lighter and you're going to move that kettlebell uh, as fast as you can. And if I want you to improve your endurance, then we're going to get kind of a light to intermediate bell, but we're going to do a lot of reps or a lot of time. Okay? Mm -hmm. there, there are different ways to manipulate the variable. Um, but what you can see is that you choose how fast you move the bell. How fast you move the bell dictates the energy system that you use to move the bell. Because again, you can't, you can't use your, um, your high octane, high power energy system to move that bell for very long. So these are, these are some of the variables that we want to think of is, is the position, is how quickly we want to move a bell and what energy system we're after. You know, so with, with fighting, for example, you're going to have a lot of aerobic, uh, a lot of aerobic work, both for the you know moving, circling, grappling, things like that. But also, you know, when we mix it up a little bit, we throw some punches. Um, we use a, a, a different energy system, but then that aerobic system needs to come back and help us recover. So we're going to use the different energy systems. We're going to use different loads. We're going to even use different skills in order to uh, make this relevant for fighters. And again. This, this works for fighters, it works for a lot of other, other sports. You wanna think about what is the stance, what type of muscle reaction do we wanna elicit, and then what type of energy system do we wanna train. Once you know that, it makes it really easy to come up with rep schemes, how long are they resting, how long are they working, and how fast are you moving. And that, yeah. really, is, that really is about it. Cool, side note, coaches, athletes, actually learn how to do these things right, and that way when you move these bells and these Ballistic manners, you don't hurt yourself because that would derail your training and your fighting. Well, that, that is a fair point, and I'm not going to call anybody out because I've seen some really solid coaches use kettlebells in their training. Um, and a lot of coaches, really high-level coaches, don't understand how to use kettlebells. So they have their athletes doing 
kettlebell swings. I'm doing a lot of this. I know. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's better than the bad words it's like that I would usually bunny use. Bunny rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have their athletes doing bad kettlebell swings, and they don't know how. They don't know how to modulate their impulse. They don't know how to. They don't know how to move safely. They're not using momentum. They're using muscle power, and they're looking at it as like, oh, I'm going to do kettlebell swings to train my hamstrings and glutes. That's not training. That's really amateurish, amateur, amateurish stuff. These same coaches don't look at the rest of their training that way, but they look at kettlebells that way because they don't quite understand them yet. So if you teach your athletes how to use them, they can modulate impulse, they can use their own body, their, their whole body momentum to drive into a bell, um, you're gonna have a lot more variability in your training, you're gonna be a lot more specific, but you gotta learn how to do it right. Don't think just because you, 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 you watch the video on a swing you know, it's, it's, yeah. you, you don't know until you know, and it takes a long time. Yeah, if you don't know, you better know. And that's it. That's All right. It. You want to fight about it? Then hit us up in the comments. Okay. Until then, stay strong. Okay. Okay. <laughs>